another world. General Hospital, the young and the restless. These are the days of our lives. Also, narration. A thousand years ago, this land was green and good. Your real complaint is with the person or deity who made this world, tying all the world's prosperity to a f***ing crystal. It's kind of like that time I stole an ATM and tried to start my own state, only to find out the hard way that the money eventually runs out. For a thousand years they have ruled, yet now... There are only ten. Is there a dwindling population because the Skeksis are evil, or is it because they don't have any females around? Come on, movie. You know we want to know if the Skeksis f or once did. They must have done something for a thousand years. Their fate, the dark crystal. Well, roll credits. Drive safe. Everybody remember to tip your bartender. Trevor, you scamp! A thousand years ago, the crystal cracked. Yes, we know. But there is a prophecy. The narrator almost sounds guilty revealing that information. A thousand years have passed. After watching this movie for six minutes, I'm wondering how many years have passed since the crystal crack? The movie never tells us, and it's frustrating, because it would be really good to know that information to give us some perspective. Ah, Steven Tyler! To save our world, Gilfling, you must find the shark. Man, for a dying guy, he sure has lots of last words. Also, why couldn't the Master have told Jen of this prophecy, like, a couple years ago? Why now, when he's dying? Is this the only time the prophecy came up? Are prophecies being delivered by the Pony Express? Before the three sons meet. My Three Sons. Starring Fred McMurray. If not, Skeksis rule forever. What? You mean all nine of them? Do Skeksis suddenly start reproducing when the three sons meet? My three sons! And it seems even though the Skeksis have been ruling for an amount of time, this movie constantly fails to remind us of, aren't the mystics living in a virtual paradise? There are so many gaps to the opening narration and prophecy. It's like someone found a thousand page book with 600 pages torn out and made a movie out of it. But master, I'm only a gelfling. And that asshole Gandalf just sent my best friend Frodo on a quest even though he's just a hobbit. What is it with you people? I should have told you these things long ago. Dying Mystic Master Guy would be amazing at cinema sense. Mm. I hate your whimper. Mm. Skipsy. Movie geared towards kids gives them at least 25 years worth of nightmare fuel. As you wish. This trial by stone, in which two Skeksis will decide who becomes emperor by hitting a stone with swords, is stupid. But it's better than the Electoral College. I happy that! What? What did dude even do? He whacked a rock. What are the parameters for judging a good or bad whack? What's the objective here? I'm too Skeksy for my clothes. Too Skeksy for my clothes. That is a very naked Skeksis. Nexus? Man, just for the sets and puppeteering, I'm taking two sins off this bitch right now. The Skeksis have banished Chamberlain, but why do they have a law about banishment, but not the kind of banishment you follow through on? They stripped him naked, said he was banished, and promptly did nothing else about it. Hideous girlfriend! We find out later this is a crystal bat, which somehow evolved a camera that connects via cryfi and transmits video streams to the crystal itself on 1982 Twitch. This is both insanely convenient and f***ed up on Mother Nature's part. You look like a girlfriend! Smell like Gelfling! Hmm, guy who's one of the last of his kind, doesn't know there's a female like him out there, goes to a strange world to meet a suspicious hermit voiced by Frank Oz. Yep, this is The Empire Strikes Back again. It looks pretty, and this is a kind of solar system something, but look at all the deadly sharp edges on this motherfucker. This lab is a death trap. What's it for? Is that what you want to know? Maybe if you let him get a word in edgewise, he would tell you. The Great Conjunction is the end of the world! But... What do I do with the shard? Heal the dark crystal. But how? Questions, questions. Too many questions. Well, f you've been nothing but Madam Exposition up to this point. Then he asks for pertinent info and you nag him about questions? Do you want a shard? Here. Agra is in possession of multiple crystal shards for some reason. And somehow she didn't keep the important ones separated or marked. Why would she collect a bunch of unimportant crystal shards and throw them haphazardly in a box with the one that's key to this entire world's future? Listen, Gelfling, there is much to be learned and you have no time. That is not helpful. Furthermore, she doesn't even tell him anything during the time-lapsing cross-dissolve that makes his quest easy. It's one of these three, I'm sure. Can he just take all of them? Does the Dark Crystal reject you like a website after three failed password attempts if you try to use the wrong ones? This f***ing works. Thanks, omniscient mystic assholes. And for teaching Jen his wishbone flute, take a bow, Zamphir. So he jumped out the window and landed on a dirt slide down the mountain? That was easy. I'm sorry, but Jen is dead and the Skeksis will rule forever. It is time 
time to return to the castle. Given how slow you walk, I think it was time to start the return maybe a couple months ago, but you do you. Seeing this lush world populated by strange creatures, you can see why Return of the Jedi became so Jim Hensonified the following year. What wasn't predictable was how all this somehow leads to the Happy Time murders. Also, at the beginning of this movie, the narrator told us the land was green and good before the crystal cracked, but from what we've seen, it still is, except for the area immediately around the castle. It's not like what happened to the Pride Lands after Scar took over. Wow, I'm not sure if I'm more impressed that he can watch YouTube videos on this shard or that he gets a good signal out here in the forest. He's walking through the jungle and some stuff moves and animals hide and he gets spooked. And this goes on for a lot more sometime than you remember. Oh no, he somehow stumbled into a Taylor Swift video, which means this song is about him. Movie asks, would you go Gelfling? And Gambles, the answer might be yes, which it is. Between fasting, sharing our memories. Since we've ripped off enough Star Wars, why not the mind meld from Star Trek while we're at it? And he shows me numbers and things called words. And everywhere I go, I learn the shapes of kindness. Excuse me? The shapes of kindness? Which shapes are kind and which are unkind? Oh, and question, did you learn the different textures of disappointment? She sings and some creature comes up and lifts Jen out of the mud. But what if Jen had fallen into a mud puddle that didn't have a helper fish in it, huh? What then? Over two full minutes of these disgusting rat birds eating and being gross. Moldy mildew! You mother of mouth muck! Frank f***ing ass. Also, how in the f*** did moldy mildew mother of mouth muck not become a pop culture phenomenon? <laughs> I hope all that just happened was she's an old lady and she sat down. I could have done without the grunt though, personally. Crystal bats fly! The Wizard of Oz has now joined the line of people who'd like to have a word with this film. Somewhere, a crudely drawn Thomas and Martha Wayne are getting stabbed by a rotoscope knife. <laughs> This is exactly what John and Yoko's first date was like. They aren't even attempting to be stealthy or stay hidden. Does Jen forget the massive attack back at the planetarium? Is the concept of evil guys wanting him dead just something he's suppressed? Dark Crystal Tales, the Birdemic. Also, um, this is definitely someone holding a puppet up in front of a screen playing a shot of the water. These Ewoks look like the Mandrakes from that one early Harry Potter movie. You guys better keep it down. Fraggles are sleeping next door. And then everything must be done before the three sons join in one. And that's all. And then he died. I would have removed 500 sins if Kira immediately said, What an asshole. Every single scene in this movie goes on for some time. See, this is why you always keep a lookout outside your weird, deliriously happy hoedown building. The Gartham are once again kidnapping non-Gelflings. And I've just got to wonder, after they brought back Augra the last time, why didn't the Skeksis make the Gartham watch the live feed the bat was taking of Jen and Kira and tell them don't come back until you kidnap those two? I mean, the Skeksis left this all up to chance again. <laughs> hey, why does only one Skeksis make the whale noises? I figure it's so we, the audience, can always know which one Chamberlain is, since the Skeksis do all sort of look similar. But within their culture, it's an odd thing for only one guy to do. Characters in a movie that are running away from someone or something fall down to create cheap tension cliche. I wish I'd never heard of this shard. You see, Jen is a prime example of when schools fail our kids. Sure, the master taught him words and numbers, and the shapes of kindness, but he didn't teach Jen what mattered most, that there is no God. Jen, there you are. Here, this moss will make it better. Science! Man, every time they need something, a shard, an agra, a sea creature to lift him out of a pond, medical moss, it's literally right next to them. Also, medical moss is A, the name of my middle school Wiccan-themed neo-jazz band, B, what the Patriots call the signing of Randy, C, a spicy Albanian cola drink, or D, what my grandma calls medical marijuana. Look at him go! What a sight! I think they've covered about 50 yards at this point. Good thing the castle is like only two blocks away. Jen and Kira slept here until morning, but what happened when the Gartham came back to the castle empty-handed again? Why didn't the Skeksis send the bats out to find them? They had f***ing hours to discover their location, and later we're gonna find that Gartham haven't even gotten back yet. So I'm saying that's bull considering the speed at which we've seen them reach their destinations. Can both my diverging thoughts about the Gartham be true? I say yes. Kira, look here. You better come take a look at this cliche. Also, there just happens to be Gelfling hieroglyphics in a ruin they just happened to stumble on. And I was actually not going to give a sin, because finally we won't hear Jen asking what the hell to do with the shard anymore. But you know how we do. <laughs> this little Chewbacca ball was cute for a bit, but ultimately he's more trouble than he's worth. Show them you want peace. I really hope these Gelflings are smart enough to see through Gollum, I mean Chamberlain's ruse. Over here! It sure is f***ing handy that she can speak to all of goddamn nature. Holy Christ, this f***er has teeth in the back of his throat! The prophecy didn't say anything about this! <laughs> prophecy humor. Out there is the great shaft of the castle! Nope, I just double checked and that's still in my pants. I don't see how you ride one of these for any length of time without getting a hernia, a slip disc, and a journal full of regretful thoughts. Here's one shot of Jen where a green screen is obviously being used, despite all the other shots in this scene having a real sky behind the puppets. I would feel bad about this if that creature had been even 
bit less ugly. I can't feel sorry for the death of a porcupine grasshopper walrus face camel thing. I just can't. <laughs> you, Mumios, are wings, not parachutes. They need to move for her to fly, hover, or even float gently down. Go back to physics class. I don't have wings. Of course not. You're a boy. Well, at least I can stop worrying about my male pronoun usage with regard to Jen, so I have that going for me. Away into the castle. This must lead into the law part. Just making assumption after assumption, I see. I mean, he'll be right, of course, but this looks more like an entrance to a secret death cult than a castle's basement. Three in the mouth and another one watching is both a way to describe this scene and a correct description of my last sexual encounter. This guy is fast. He was back at the Pod People village, and then two gelflings rode the super fast anger kangaroos to the castle, and boom, Chamberlain is already here too. Guys, this is hopeless. I don't know where you are, but you are nowhere close, and you've been walking for days. How did you underestimate your own speed this terribly? Finally, the dark crystal and labyrinth merge into a single film. These little mice are all over this movie, and it's a tiny detail that seems insignificant, but it's just one of the magical ways Henson was able to world build while being charming at the same time. Once and off! My hand! So, my hand. Oh well, don't need to treat it now. Hopefully my corresponding Skeksis will put a band-aid on and I won't have to do shit. I've got a lot of walking to do. But Zaya, you could drink her essence. What? Definitely left your f***ing lab thinking your process didn't work. And after he left, you said it always worked better when you used Gelflings. But the Emperor has no reason to see this as a good idea. We already saw this laser thing suck out a podling's life essence by zapping straight into its eyes. But what if she closes her eyes here? It's so simple, it just might work. Kara, fight them! Seriously? I know they had that dream fasting thing earlier when they touched hands. But now, out of nowhere, they can communicate telepathically with no touching? This is like the least earned climb out from under the rubble moment in all of film history. The last time we saw this essence draining thing, the Skeksis supervised the whole goddamn thing. And it was just for one of those asshole podling assholes. Now they have a Gelfling, the one race they are committed to killing. And absolutely zero dickheads are watching her. Also, how did Kira just snap out of the crystal's purple beam? I thought in addition to draining one's essence, it hypnotized them. And taught them the language and the history of the Cyclos. So she can talk to animals and this science asshole has filled his science lab with enough animals to fill a zoo. And at what point did the human screenwriters give the script over to the convenience machine? It may be Kira's sound that stirred up the animals, but this prison break is entirely on whoever designed all these cages that only work if an animal isn't agitated. This asshole gets overrun by rodents, and I've never been more disappointed in a character deserving punishment but only getting it via tiny animal attack scene since Peter Stormare died from a dozen compy bites in the Lost World Jurassic Park. Off screen! Oh look, the mystics made it to the castle. Or rather, to a point a mile away from the castle, which means it'll take them, does math, six days to get there. He crawled out of an immense rubble, only to fall down a hole that for some reason leads to the lair of all the beasts assassins. And is Jen the most unlucky motherfucker in all of Muppetville? Sneaky. Is that the crystal? Fucking yes! How have you been told an entire encyclopedia's worth of information, but not any of the information you actually need to complete the task? These are not the droids you're looking for. Nobody turn your head or look around or anything. Just walk and look straight ahead. No one is hiding in the shadows that can ruin our thing. This is what I came for, the Dark Crystal. Well, they say once you go Dark Crystal, you never go back. Why is the self-aware Kushball still getting screen time? Is he gonna save the day? He better not f***ing save the day. <laughs> no! Main character has a doohickey. He or she needs to save the day and suddenly loses or drops said doohickey in a crucial moment. Even though we all know they will definitely get that doohickey back in time enough to save the day cliche. Man, this movie has a lot of cliches. <laughs> Oh, thank Christ. Take him from her, now! Watch out, Kira! Man's warning. Cuts, yelling, angles, editing. Why didn't she just fly up there and hand it to him? With the wings and all, and the wings, and the flying. <laughs> this is what supposedly heals the crystal. There's still a huge gap. You could argue it technically doesn't fit. It's like throwing a hot dog down a hallway. A phrase I hear a lot that usually has positive connotations, but not here. Why do the Beetle Warriors fall to pieces before any of the Skeksis? Is the destruction post-unification of the crystal a class-based affair? The mystics are all chill and casual, even while the goddamn ceiling falls down around them. And maybe they're the prophesied leaders and they're immune from debris. But still, at least wear a helmet. I mean, this is a cataclysmic level of roof debris. Um, what? They merged and became ghosts? What was sundered and undone shall be whole the two! Made one! Good to know that these glowing mystical beings are still 50% Skeksis. Hold her to you. She is part of you. Like, literally, she was made from one of your ribs. Now we leave you the crystal of truth. Ah, oh, f more crystals. No! Well, you're at it. Why don't you give me a nice paper cut and pour lemon juice on it? 
Have you ever watched a music video and wondered, how'd this person get here? Like, the true story? Well, if you're looking for answers, you've come to the right place. Check out Music From Behind, the new series from Music Video Sins that dives deep into the cavernous secrets of your favorite celebrities. Why did Justin Bieber decide to grow that mustache? And does it have anything to do with Russian election interference? Why are Offset and Cardi B so magnetically attracted to each other? And how does that impact the weather in Topeka, Kansas? What does BTS really stand for? Is Kelly Clarkson an adorable robot made specifically for broadcast television? Will Billie Eilish ever speak above a whisper? And if not, why? Find out all this and more on the brand new series, Music From Behind. Okay, here I am. Sorry I'm late. What do you need? Um, I think we're actually done. Holy shit, seriously? Okay, awesome. I'm gonna go cyberstalk my college girlfriend for a while. Uh, after I watch this new show, of course. Cool, that'll give me time to call the authorities. Wait, what were we talking about? Music from behind! Watch it! And I must leave you. Leave me? There is another skywalk. And now the beam will rid you of your fears, your thoughts. Your vital essence. It's wrong because everybody has the right to live and be happy without being told, chopped, and knifed! Now I've got the shard, but what do I do with it? I've got to concentrate. 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 Hello? 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 Echo! Echo! What's he, what's he want? It's a painting. It's oh, a painting. Yeah. He's I pointing know. at the painting. Hold on, you know what he's saying? He is saying, I am the lamb. Huh? I am the lamb, and you, you, my children, have given me life. I found my daddy with panther claws in his chest. You ain't the son of a king, you're the son of a murderer. Bouge! Bouge, 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 bouge! You speak Burmese? Oh, Elaine, that was gibberish. Hello there. Come here, my little friend. 